guys, this is Phyllis from Houseline Software, and today I'm going to be showing you um, how our new uh, indicator scanner works. Uh, the indicator scanner is a new feature introduced in Hasbot 2.3, and basically, um, to sum it up in like one sentence, it's a very, very specialized backtest um, that, that will basically run... Um, uh, it'll run through, um, you set a period, um, say like, like two weeks, and then you'll run an indicator through it and you'll backtest every possible um, uh, combination of, uh, of one variable with an indicator, like say like, say like RSI length. Um, it'll also run it against um, uh, reversing trade signals, deviation offset, and uh, different candlestick types. So to do this first, you need to make a trade bot. Um, on the exchange that you want to run it on, I'm going to use BTCE. I'm going to do BTC US dollar. Um, the name doesn't matter. You just call it new trade bot. Um, the reason why we do this is we need to make sure that Hasbot has enough data to uh, perform the indicator scan. So we're going to go ahead and make it. We can just quickly add trade signals. We'll switch it over to bot. We can just do 0 0.05. Doesn't matter. We're not actually going to execute trades. Um, but the bot is going to simulate trades. So basically, and now we need to choose the indicator that we want to run it, run it on. So for instance, um, I don't know, we can choose an indicator. Um, let's go ahead and go with um, uh, Stochastic. So we can do that. We'll wait for the software to add the indicator. And then what we're going to want to do is we are going to change the uh, time interval. We're going to do it to four hours, just so we grab data. And then we're going to run um, a quick back test on that. So while this uh, loads, um, yeah. So basically, yeah, right now it's just grabbing data, just making sure we have it. We're not actually not going to test it at four hours. Um, but yeah, so once it's finished, OK, cool. We have all the data we need. We can go ahead and switch that back to the time period we actually want to test. We'll do 30 minutes, click Update, and then we'll go back. And so now that we have a trade bot, it's you know all set up. So we're going to go ahead and go to the indicator scanner. This is what the indicator scanner interface looks like. Um, so yeah, so basically you can see here it sees our trade bot and it sees the indicator that we were going to do that for. And now we have some options here. So you can basically run it against um, one variable within the indicator. So the reason why I chose um, Stochastic is because um, there's literally one variable, uh, which is length. So if we want to figure out, so right now the default it says it's going to go between a length of 5 and a length of 20. We can go ahead and change that to 50 because I'm not sure what the length is going to be. So we have 30 minutes. That's cool. That's what I want to check. Um, I can only choose one. We're going to let it uh, run through all the different uh, candlesticks um, or candlestick types, um, the deviation offset, uh, which is which basically delays trade signals. And this is the um, this is usually the variable that becomes very interesting in the results um, because say you'll have an indicator, especially when you have an oscillator, uh, it'll generally buy and sell a little bit too soon. Um, by adding a delay to that or the deviation offset or adding a value to the deviation offset we delay the trade signal so we might actually catch the top of um, you know we might actually sell the top and buy bottom or as close to that as possible so um, I'll go ahead and run this uh, run this first and then I'll go through what all of these mean um, alternatively I've also built a legend on our wiki um, about this, so be sure to check the uh, wiki page for the indicator scanner. We'll just go ahead and click start. And if you want, we can go ahead and check the logs and you'll see what it's doing. It's running um, almost 2,000 back tests. Or actually, I already made a mistake. I'll have to do this again, but that's fine. So basically, it'll be done once it runs through all of this. And yeah, it failed. And the reason why it failed is because I did not tell it uh, how long, how um, its start date. It actually was a start date of a couple seconds ago. So um, yeah, that's a, a mistake I've made in the past, and I probably shouldn't have made that, but it's good for you guys to know, um, you know how that works. So generally, you do, for the time period, you don't want to go longer than a month because it's, 
this is a very specialized back test and your results will not be that meaningful if it's if you go farther than that um, because the reason for that is because there is no good indicator for all of the um, all of the market conditions so I mean I'm not aware of an indicator that um, you know, trades extremely well in sideways markets and with high volatility so generally you want to pick something that is you know gonna fit within you know the market conditions so we have you know stochastic at 30 minutes is going to be good at, during a sideways market but it's going to do quite terribly in a um, you know volatile one so because of this we want to select our time period um, you know that is according to that so I mean um, you know based on what happened in the market recently um, we had a big dump and then we had we're a bit sideways right now so because of that I could actually choose the specific dates like Saturday we had our dump and then you know up until today but for the sake of this we'll do like one week so I chose the fourth today's the eleventh you can uh, verify that and then we'll run that again so this is actually very useful because say if you if um, say like say today where we start pumping and then you can actually choose the dates you can use your indicator and then you can try to find the best values for you know okay I know it's pumping you know and then you can start to build um, you can start to see these patterns of what's good you know when it would have done well when it would have done bad and you can you know start to it'll give you insight into the market so now that it's finished we can go ahead and get rid of this and yeah so basically what it does is it um, we can go ahead and click on performance the performance is not very great for this uh, the performance metric is not profit don't think of it as profit think of it as um, a relative value um, towards the amount of the number amount of the amount of trades and the um, and the uh, where it would have traded so if you actually I'll go through the legend right now so here this is the deviation offset value so this right here um, would say a deviation value of 10 is good with ashy candles is the candlestick type. This is whether or not reverse trade signals should be enabled or not. False. Yeah, is false. And uh, this one right here is actually the uh, value of the, you know, the part of the indicator you're actually scanning through. So a value between 5 and 50, this is saying 6. And the next one is the total amount of buys. This is the amount of early buys towards, you know, if you were to count, you know, if you look at a parabolic chart, um, you can kind of think of it in that way. Like, you know, it would have bought a little bit early on that, which is okay. Um, but you want to get, and the next one is late. And this one is, you know, um, ideal. So you want to try to get the amount of, you can even filter by this. Um, so you want, you know, the amount of ideal is kind of interesting. Um, then on the other side you have you know cell signals, the total total cells, um, the number of you know early, then late, then ideal, and then here we have a total trades. Our performance metric would actually you know kind of calculates this through the number of trades and like how many would have been early or late and ideal, and that's how it counts. So you want the highest amount. So this is actually not a good time um, to back test that. So let's go ahead and uh, let's look at like two weeks just to show you. So yeah, so basically like the way I use it is I look at say, okay, we have a sideways market, which values, you know, you start writing them down, you do a little bit of research. I mean, you can spend hours on this thing and it'll just, you know, you'll start to realize like, okay, deviation offset within stochastic is good around like three or four. And then you'll start figuring out the length and then you can kind of adjust to it. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is still quite terrible in terms of that. Um, so then you can also start to play with, you know, the length. Maybe 30 minute length is not that good for the time period. Maybe we should do five. You can change that and start it again. And you can just keep playing around, playing around, playing around. So, um, but like the main thing is that you don't want the, you don't want to associate the performance metric with a, you know, an absolute value of profit because that's not what it is. Um, and the nice thing next to it is that's you can actually save that parameter. So it'll actually, if you click this button, um, you know, next to the settings that you like, it'll actually save those settings within uh, Stash Asset in your trade bot. So then you can just go quickly over to the trade bot and just activate it once you found what you like. So, um, yeah. So we'll just go ahead and let this uh, run, and hopefully I can get a 
good result. But if not, then yeah, then you can do this yourself, and you can find um, uh, quite a bit. I mean, I've I've ran through quite a few indicators with this on different um, uh, market conditions. That's really nice on sideways and really nice and, vol and volatile. So I mean, if you're unsure of what to run in a volatile market, you can look at the market, say is it volatile or not. You know, depending on how you answer that, you can start looking at indicators, start looking at you know different values, and you can discover the beauty of the deviation offset. But also keep in mind that you know it's um, that that I mean some of the results are going to be kind of strange because you're going to have anomalies. Sometimes like you know, I'll I'll get a result where it's like you know a massive deviation offset of like ten or something uh, with um, reverse trade signals, and it just doesn't make sense. You know, why would you run you know uh, Stosh RSI at, you know, specific settings with reverse trade signals and a massive deviation offset. Apparently it traded well, but that may not be something you want to run. So it's really important to, you know, understand what you're doing and understand that, you know, it's, that this is more of a, a tool to gain insight and that, you know, it can help you to identify patterns within the specific uh, market conditions. And yeah, so yeah, this is a little bit better. Um, so you obviously generally want to go with that. And like here would have probably been all right. Like you have um, deviation offset of six, normal candles, um, the you know, default trade signals, a length of 38, and you would have had 23 total trades with a performance metric of almost four. So then you can you know save this, and then you know our bot will will be that. And then we can look at it. You know, if we go back to the trade ball, we can take a peek and you know see if that's something we want to run. So essentially, that's that's how it works. Um, it's quite easy to use. Um, I apologize if you spend a lot of time on this. I have when we first developed it, um, but it also helped me to get better uh, trade settings and to evaluate how I trade um, within specific markets. And it's actually helped me to um, increase profit. So it's uh, very useful. So. Um, with that, um, good luck. And if you have any questions, you know you can uh, send us uh, an email or you can write us on our forums. And yeah, good luck and happy trading.